So apparently you can trim or cut toughened glass without it exploding. Um, I was told when I found this was a few millimetres too big to put inside my double glazing frame which had um, warped during installation. I couldn't do it and I'd have to order another piece of this which was going to cost me about £150. Absolutely no way. I even phoned the factory um, which does a lot of windows for the south of England and they said it's actually impossible you just have to start again. Well, turns out it's not true. As I suspected, they just don't have the um, interest. So I've got this diamond cutting wheel set, which was about £5 on eBay. And I've got my Dremel running a reasonable middle speed. Because what I figured out as an engineer, the reason that these shatter is because you're putting lots of energy in to something which has got that energy bound up. So this glass has been tempered. Apparently when it cools, it locks in the heat energy. So it's ready to explode into safer small pieces. So it's not gonna explode unless you exceed a certain amount of energy. And if you use something heavy like an angle grinder, and I, I considered using these, it's just too much powerful. We're just talking about 500 watts maybe a fraction of that even is enough to shatter this and it's certainly set up a low frequency oscillation which might be its sort of reg resonant frequency but with these little discs they only weigh a few grams and they're running at a higher speed so I suspected with coolant that uh, they wouldn't have enough energy to cut and because they got such a thin blade we're talking a fraction of a millimeter they, they don't require so much power to make a cut. If you're trimming glass, it's usually thin stuff. You don't need to have a big thick slit. So here I am, I've decided I've got three millimeters to take off this edge. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mask it up so I've got a nice line to follow. I'm gonna go front and back round. And then when that's all smoothed on, and I've, I've wiped this grease free so this will stay stuck, I shall put some drilling fluid on, I'll line this up vertical and then I can brace myself against solid to just so and there's two ways of cutting I found. You can either start cutting a slit or you can just use it as a file on the edge. And um, I've already done this side, so I've taken one millimetre off of there. Um, you'll see I said two actually, I took two millimetres off there. It's absolutely smooth, and what I did is I just ran the um, thing like a file at the back up and down till it was smooth. I didn't cut a slot because I figured that might splinter off some nasty shards that could be damaging to me. Obviously I've got a face mask on um, because this is diamond um, glass I don't want to inhale it. could cause in, in bleeding or something. Anyway to finish off I've just got this piece of carborundum stone to take off the sharp edges. If you look, this tempered glass is safe to handle, but within a few seconds, you can actually take off glass with there, and that's, that's just smoother. So that works, but that would take too long. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pause this. I'll show you how I've masked it up and put it into position, ready for cutting, right. Okay, I've got that masked off, so it's not too bad, both sides. So I'm going to cut this piece off, and I'm going to see the difference between cutting a line or filing it. When I get down to the thin bits, I'll be filing from the edge. With a thick bit, I might try cutting a slit. <clears throat> so, first of all, I need to moisten this up. Just prevents the heat building up mainly on the tool to be honest so and then switch her on I can't do this with um, one hand so I'll just show you a little bit with one hand so you can see I've actually got a, a yeah. I've got a cut through and um, you cut from behind. 
or you can go down the side and fire. It's actually quite fast. That's about two millimeters thick now. As long as I keep this tall. I, the reason I'm doing it from the back is because it keeps the diamond dust away from my face and hair a bit longer. It's going to be easier to clean up. So I need to, need to wet this again because it's gone dry. As long as I work slowly, I'm never going to put enough energy into this to um, cause the explosion. Obviously I'm wearing spectacles, um, safety glasses, so there's no way this diamond dust is going to go straight into my eye at high velocity. And if it should explode, I'm safe as well. So we're getting through it, all right. Um, so what you just, I'll put this on a tripod now. So let's just keep this cool. If this stuff boils, it's too hot, right? So it's just foaming. Oh, hello. I heard something go crackety crack there. That's not good. Oh, that's because I cooled it, isn't it? Interesting. That's my crack. Uh-oh, I think it's... No, that's all right, that's pen marks. You've got to be careful with the heat, basically. Well, we'll carry on. <laughs> Just nerve-wracking. All right, let's carry on. As an engineer, I mean, I think the reason this is working and not shattered already is because I'm avoiding any sharp corners and I suggest filing is safer because you've still got a fairly straight regular edge. As soon as you get a crack started, a crack is going to, just like any fracture in a hard material, it's going to open up real fast. So by filing down from the edge, it's going to be a lot safer. If you wanted to cut out like a hole for a pet flap or something it might be a lot more difficult because you've got to really make sure that um, you're not um, creating fracture lines so I think a lot more coolant would be necessary that heat is your enemy if heat is building up it's kind of um, building up to the extent where it may trigger a fracture so let's just keep everything cool and a low power, low speed approach. I'm here, I don't mind if I spend an hour doing this, it's going to save me £150. And if this breaks, I've got nothing to lose because they've already said they can't do anything with it. I have to have a new one if this doesn't work. So I absolutely love recycling. Let's keep filing. pause this for a bit. So it's pretty much there now. Just going to make sure it's nice radius is on the edges. So I don't hurt my fingers or anything when I'm not installing it. Straight line. 
super cool. Hasn't blown up yet. And I'm just going to use my dressing stone, which is something you'd normally sharpen a chisel with. And I don't think it's harder than steel. Just makes it really safe to handle. But so all those experts that worked there for 20 years, they said, all their life glazing company can't be done. Impossible, forget it, they try. Um, they don't have any tools that can do it and it will always explode apparently. And I searched YouTube for a couple of hours and the internet, all specialist sites about this, couldn't find anybody that would cut it. I saw loads of examples where people use power tools and it always shattered. Um, and this is toughened glass by the way. Um, you can cut non-toughened I saw lots of videos of those, but with this toughened glass, you can't. And the reason I had it toughened is because it's going in a window and uh, it's such a delicate shape. Now I've had the middle cut, so it's liable to crack because it's not a flat square. So I had to have it toughened to give it the strength to cope with knocks. And if it did break, break safely. Otherwise, that could have just, if it was plate glass, could have come down and done someone a serious injury if they hit it accidentally with something and then it comes into them in big big sharp lumps so there we go I'm pretty happy with that and um, I'm going to trial fit this now as we engineers always say measure twice cut once so I've measured this about <laughs> 10 times I'm going to now fit this back in the window I've done the main two parts I think I've got a bit more to take off here but I'm going to clean this off, wash the diamond out of my hands and I'll be having a shower later to get all this out of my hair and washing my clothes and hoovering up here so that this doesn't spread this stuff. But it's saved me £150 if this works. And what I'm going to do is I'll pause the video and I'll show you the window in a second. It's just to show you my safety gear. So I've got ear defenders for the noise. I've got a face and nose mask to stop the glass being inhaled. I've got some um, large spectacle eyewear, which I need, but protects me against flying glass, the coolant, and obviously a nice contained self atmosphere, safe environment here.